Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, wherever, whatever time it is in your neck of the woods. My name is Kim Case, and I'm pleased to co-host today with Peggy George. Lorna Costantini is off celebrating her Thanksgiving for Canadians up in um, Manitoba, I believe, with her family. So we miss her, and she will be back next week. And we want to wish a happy Thanksgiving to all of the Canadians that are joining us in the live session today, as well as um, listening to the recording. Our topic today is the second of our new series, Featured Teacher. And our featured teacher today is Karen McMillan. And you may know her on Twitter and Plurk as McPeach. We're very excited to have her join us today. I'm going to quickly go over some of the features that we'll be using in Illuminate today for those that are new. This is the area on the whiteboard, the main area of the Illuminate platform. Just below the participants window are a hand with a green up arrow that you can click on if you want to uh, make a comment or share something towards the latter part of the session today. There are some emoticons. To the right hand side are some polling features and that's where you would click to cast your vote for the polling questions. And in the very far right is a blue door that you can click on to let us know that you're away from your computer. It's not how you exit the session. During the session we'll be using the chat interface most of the time, you'll send a message and then click send, making sure that it says to this room. If you want to send a private message to the moderators or specific person, you can use the drop down arrow. Keep in mind that the moderators can see all messages. If you're going to speak towards the latter portion of the show using your microphone, you click the button to talk and then you click it to deactivate it when you have finished speaking. These are the whiteboard tools just to the left of the whiteboard, and we'll be using the laser pointer today. And that's the wand with the red starburst at the end. And Illuminate has some new features, notifications, to let you know that somebody has entered the session or the timer has gone off. And you can set those and change those by going up to Tools and then to Preferences. And there are some visual notifications that you can enable or disable. You just click the check and you can find those right there by looking on, on preferences under general. You'll click apply and then OK. And you can also set the audible notifications. And those are only affected your computer. They don't affect anybody else's. So you can set them to your own preferences and your own uh, set up. We will be using application sharing today. And in case you can't see everything, you may want to consider using the scale to fit um, option by going to tools and selecting application sharing. Or you can just leave it as is if that's um, big enough for you to see and you can see most of everything that you want to see. We will definitely be using that for some videos. And at that time, it may not be uh, preferable to use scale to fit, but that's something you can consider. All of our sessions are recorded, and they are posted to the, our website at live.classroom20.com on the Archives and Resources page. We post the chat log, then MP3, MP4, and the link to the full recording. Preferences are under Tools, and then select Preferences. Sarah. Now we're going to go ahead and do our map activity. And if everybody will click on the laser pointer, which is the wand, the blue wand with the red starburst, and then click on your location on the world map so that we can see where you're joining us from. And I see you're going down in South America. Looks like possibly Asia over. And of course, 
the United States and Canada. We're so glad that you joined us wherever you're tuning in from. We also have Tammy Moore today providing the closed captioning features for us. And we're so grateful that Tammy does that each week. If you'd like to view the closed captioning features, you can click on the CC up in the toolbar. And um, Peggy, you might be able to answer Sarah's question about um, on a Mac where the preferences are. I thought they were both under tools, but I could be wrong. You can click on the blue CC, and we're very grateful that Tammy does that each week for us. <clears throat> okay, they're under our Macs as well. Okay, Illuminate Live. Great. And let's go ahead and go on to our, our polling question. And the first question is, have you ever used a flip video camera for your projects with your students? If you have, click on the green check. And if you have not, click the red X. And you vote just below the participant window. I'll give everybody just a bit more time to vote. Clicking on the green check or red X, indicating whether you have used a flip video camera with your students. And let me get those results for us. And it looks like about 29% of us have not used a flip video camera. And about 46% have. Let me clear the results, and then we'll go to the next question. And do you use Google Apps with your students? The Google Docs or Google Spreadsheets, Google Presentations, anything related to the Google Apps? If you do, please click on on the green X, green check. And the, if you do not, click on the red X. How exciting! You got a new computer, Sherry. I'll give everybody a bit more time to vote on whether you use Google Apps with your students. And let me get those results for us. And it looks like about 20% of us do not use the Google Apps, and about 50% do, half in the groups. So that's a great percentage. And let's go on to our last polling question. Have you ever created a podcast with your students? If you have, click on the green check. And if you have not created a podcast with your students, click on the red X. And there are lots of tools to create podcasts. Um, so let's go ahead and get those results. And it looks like about 37% of this group is not, and about 33% have. That's an interesting statistic to give Karen some information about our guests today. And our fourth question is, have you ever used the Book Whisperer program? And I'm a big fan of Donald Miller, who is known as the Book Whisperer. No relation to the Dog Whisperer, Caesar Milan. If you have used that program, please click the green check. And if you have not, click the red X. Let me get those results for us. And it's a pretty large majority, 82% have not used that program before. So we're going to be excited to hear about that. And we're ho exactly, Peggy, I was just getting ready to say that. We're hoping to have her on our uh, show as a guest. So now I am so pleased to um, welcome and introduce to you McTeach or Karen McMillan. Most of us know her as McTeach, McTeach in our session here, as well as on uh, Twitter and Plurk. And we're so glad that she, um, she accepted our invitation to join us today in our new series, Featured Teachers, showing ways and ideas for implementing technology projects with your students. 
So now, with uh, no further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Karen. And thank you so much for joining us today, Karen. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Kim, and um, everybody. Thanks for being here on a Saturday morning. It's uh, a lovely fall day here in California, um, although it may seem like summer in a couple of hours. Um, but I wanted to start by saying um, thank you to Kim and Peggy for giving me this honor and inviting me here to be here today. I, I was uh, blown away that they asked. Um, and still, perhaps a little confused as to why they did, but um, moving on, okay. Um, so I guess we'll start with um, a little bit about me, but not too much. I am um, in my fifth year as a teacher, and I teach at a Catholic school here in Northern California. I work with seventh graders for the most part, but I also teach um, eighth grade social studies. I never in intended to be a middle school teacher. I had wanted to teach high school, but um, I'm where I'm supposed to be. That's what I uh, say most days, anyway. Um, what was I going to say next? I've actually this is not my first career. Uh, I wanted to be a teacher way back in fifth grade, but never really felt confident enough to do it. So it took me about 30 years to get back on track to where I was supposed to be. Um, but ever since fifth grade, sitting in Mr. Fambrini's class, I knew that, you know what, that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, and I finally got here after having a few realizations in life. But that's a whole other story. I thought also I'd give you a, a little background on the, the whole McTeach thing. Um, that's a, a family. Thing. My brother and my sister-in-law started it, actually. Anytime we send emails to each other, we sign it with Mick something or other, um, usually having to do with what, whatever we happen to be talking about in the email, um, like uh, Mick, Harry, 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 when we're about ready to see a Harry Potter, Harry, uh, Harry Potter movie. Um, so it was just uh, a no-brainer for me. No, Kim, not McDreamy. <laughs> That's a whole other show. Um, Mick teaches me. And yes, thank you, Lee. Um, my previous um, career I, I was, I am still a massage therapist. And I was uh, doing a little bit of work at ISTE in the Bloggers Cafe. Uh, I should have put out a tip jar, I think, though or at least had somebody go buy me a, a Pepsi or chocolate. Chocolate always works. Um, OK, thankfully. I appreciate that. So let's, um, let's move on to the, the newbie question. I think that's the next slide, right? There we go. So the newbie question is, what does Web 2.0 mean to you, and why do you use Web 2.0 tools in your classroom? Um, it's an easy question to answer, and yet at the same time, it's a little complicated. So I'm going to go with the easy answer. Um, complicated just because it could take a while. Uh, and So let's go with easy. For me, um, Web 2.0 means a, a connection to the world outside of my classroom. And that enables me to have this huge variety of mentors, really. Um, available to me 24 hours a day. And this has helped me um, learn more about teaching than anything I learned in the credential program. Um, you can hop online anytime and ask a question and within seconds have an answer. Um, who wouldn't want that for themselves or for their kids, students? Um, it also has forced me to shift my focus as a teacher from what do my kids need in order to be ready for eighth grade to what do my kids need in order to be ready for whatever is coming their way. And I think we all can agree that there's no telling what that could be. So I, I'm trying to make my classroom more student-centered. 
um, by including more of these Web 2.0 tools. So that's the shortened version um, of that answer. I hope that works. And I guess we'll go on and get started. So yesterday, I thank you, Peggy. I, I came to school yesterday, and I know this is probably like the the number one rule of present uh, presenting not to admit this, but I was nervous. I've been nervous, and so um, when I got here yesterday, I, I just I was honest with my kids, and I said, look. I'm really nervous about tomorrow, and um, so just bear with me throughout the day. I, I don't want to take anybody's head off, but uh, if I do, that'd be the reason. Um, yeah, it did. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Um, so I asked the kids, I said, you know, I still don't have a title for my presentation, so what do you guys think? And they had a lot of interesting ideas about what uh, my um, presentation should be called. Um, but this one, uh, imagination is key. That one really stuck with me for several reasons. Um, one is that um, we have a theme each year for our school. And uh, this year, our theme is imagination. And so I thought, ah, that's, that's a great idea. Um, so. I also, um, well, last year we did, uh, our theme was hope, and I did hope notes with our kids. Uh, that's, <clears throat> that's a whole other conversation. But I'm hoping to do something along the same lines with imagination this year. So we'll, we'll see. But um, I also like the idea of using imagination in the uh, title because it's what I'm trying to do in the classroom to use my imagination more and to get my kids to use their imagination more in how I'm teaching. And yes, the kids do help me come up with ideas for that, but also in how they're learning. So they get to have some say in um, what they produce to show me that they've learned what I want them to learn. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm going to be drinking water because it's really early this morning here out in California, and my voice isn't awake yet. So when I asked the kids for their ideas for the title, they had a lot of ideas. This isn't even half of them on this slide. Um, Social butterflies, that's one of the quotes uh, that the kids shared with me, and that's on yeah that blog there. Um, and warm fuzzies is something we'll be doing when we go to Camp Caritas. So they, they are practicing their warm fuzzies, and they thought that would be a good one. Um, I kind of like uh, live, love, tech, and eat, pray, type, although I may have to get like permission to use that. Um, but they had they had some interesting ideas. Life with klutzy seventh graders. That does need to be explained. Um, I have several broken children right now. They um, they keep coming to school either with casts or crutches or wraps or whatever. It's driving me crazy um, because we do leave for camp in two weeks. So anyway, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is um, some of the things I do with my kids. Um, they're not necessarily all uh, tech oriented, but they do have kind of a technology slant. Um, this first one uh, is how I introduce blogging to my kids. Uh, I learned this in a session at our It looks like Karen is experiencing some bandwidth issues regarding her audio. So we hope that um, it will alleviate itself soon. OK, she must have gotten disconnected. So hopefully she will be back soon. I'm going to go ahead and while we're waiting, I'm going to share the um, 
our Glam link for our Glamorous co-host, which has a lot of her blogs and websites that she'll be using today. And on her blog, it talks about how she got this idea of paper blogs and the art of commenting from attending a session. Okay, thank you, Karen. Let me uh, give you moderator privileges. And you can take it away, Karen. Uh, sorry about that. It just, in the middle of my talking, it went into uh, reconnecting. Um, I, it's something to do with our server. I'm in my classroom, actually. So hopefully that won't happen again. Hey, it's tech. Yeah, I know. That's Thanks, Nancy. That's reassuring. Um, anyway, don't know where I was. I'll just move on. So this paper blog activity, um, it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite activities, and the kids love it. And it really does drive home um, not just the idea of what blogging is, but the important part for me is the commenting and how they treat each other in commenting. Um, I have a class of 34 students this year. Normally, I would have 36. But of those 34, 26 of them are girls. So yeah, I'll give you a second to process that one. 26 girls, 8 boys. Um, that's a lot of potential for mean behavior um, in commenting. Cattiness, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, so I, I spent a whole lot of time dealing with commenting. But so far, that it, they're really doing great with it, and I'm really proud of what they've been doing. But let's um, go through the steps here. So yeah, step one, let there be rules. It's um, before we even talk about the activity itself, I go through what I expect of them um, in terms of um, blogging behavior. And they will take home this uh, contract that you see a, a screenshot of. Um, after we've read through it in class, they take it home and they have to read through it with their parents and sign it, both the parents and uh, the student. Um, and it's just a, a list of you know how I want them to behave, how anyone should behave really online. Don't use um, their last names. Don't post pictures um, that would be considered inappropriate. Um, it's yeah, absolutely. They need guidelines. Um, they last year in a sixth grade, they had just started using blogs. Um, but they didn't really have the guidelines. And at the end of the year, I kind of took a look at their uh, blogs just to kind of get to know who they were before they ventured into my classroom. And there were, there were some comments that uh, I thought were pretty catty from the girls. And I wrote comments to them and let them know. Um, but so far this year, since They've been given guidelines and held accountable to them. Uh, they're doing great. Um, so the activity itself, I do at the beginning of the year. Uh, it it does help them kind of imagine what blogging is like. Imagine being our theme again, um, and it also helps me get to know them. Because uh, what they do is they write about uh, like their favorite activity or something that they're passionate about, like maybe the environment or ending poverty or something. Uh, and I really learn a lot about them. The funny thing is, you know, being in a Catholic school, these kids have been together. Most of them, anyway, have been together since kindergarten. So for eight plus years, some of them from even before that. And they think they know everything about each other. And then when we do this activity, they find out, hey, there's stuff I don't know about these people. And uh, it's a great uh, moment for me to say, yeah, so maybe they've changed. And maybe we shouldn't 
pigeonhole them into this idea we have of them um, from the last, oh, there we go, um, eight years. So what are we doing? Did you do that, Peggy? Oh, OK. Let me, can I move on to my next slide? Okie dokie. I'll just move that over to the side. OK. So just to go through the steps here, um, before we do the actual creating of the blogs, they have to do um, a homework assignment homework, I, I know, we don't like that word, um, but they started in class where they just write out um, their passion, whatever they want to write about in their blog. And I have them do a rough draft uh, before doing this final draft that we'll use in class because I tell them all year long, a final product should not have pencil on it. Um, pencil will smear, it gets messy, and um, it, it just doesn't look as finished. So they go home and finish their writing, and then the next day they come in, and I give them a piece of heavy, um, like cardstock kind of paper, and then they create these um, blogs. And I, honestly, I every every year blown away by some of the things that they come up with. It's it's gorgeous. This is beautiful. Um, I think I have a few more in here. So yeah, step three, they create their blog. And I don't tell them that it has to look like a blog. Um, but <laughs> this is middle school. And they're very excited about being able to do some blogging. So of course, when you're a seventh grader who's excited about blogging, um, you, you make one that looks like a blog. So I, I find that entertaining. Um, and they enjoy it, so why not? Um, but the most important part is yet to come, and that's, that's the commenting. And we spend a, a good amount of time going over how to write a proper comment. Um, that's what we'll be using for the comments, the little yellow stickies. Um, we go through this handout that I give them, and it's um, we have the link in the GLAM links for this, the art and aspirations of the commenter, which I got from someone else. It's um, cited there on the bottom. And I emphasize that you know the comments are in the important part because this is where the conversation happens. This is where. Um, sorry, I just saw Lee's question. Uh, exploring blogs so they can see what they look like. Yeah, we go through some of those on the active board. Um, some that I have pulled out uh, uh, from my PLN. Some that I think they might enjoy that would be safe for me to put up on, a, on an active board in a Catholic school so they can see what they look like. And the interesting thing is when they, uh, when we go through the uh, activity beforehand, I ask them, so you know, how many people have read blogs or looked at blogs? And most of them say they've never seen a blog or they've never read one. And, and then you show them a few and, oh, wait, that's a blog? Yeah, so um, thanks for asking that, Lee. I forgot about that. Um, I emphasize that they need to be very respectful when they comment because this is out there for everybody to see. And if uh, you're OK with your mom and your grandma and your teacher seeing it, then it's OK to post it. Uh, and before we start, here are the rules for the activity itself. This is when they're going to be wandering around the room. I tell them, um, one person at one blog at a time because I don't want them to be having conversations about the blogs. I want to know what they think about each one. So they're writing comments based on what they think about it. 
not what their best friend thinks about it. And yeah, I they're just seventh graders and twenty what did I say? Twenty six girls, they're catty. So you know, let think what you want to think. I, I say this all year long. Um, but then they also have to read it thoroughly. They can't just sit down, look at maybe the first line and write a comment. And I know that we emphasize that in our own community. We need to read it thoroughly before we start writing a comment. And you know, you make sure you're not misreading something before you, you add anything. Uh, I do ask them to be quiet when they do this because, um, well, as someone with special needs, I know that if I'm doing any reading, I need it to be quiet. And I do tell them that. I tell them uh, about my issues um, so they can understand me a little better. But then I tell them, have fun with this. Enjoy it. Um, and they do. They have a lot of fun. But this is um, a shot in the classroom. It, it, it's perfectly quiet for 30 to 45 minutes. Um, they'll go as long as I let them go. But I was amazed. They're, they never um, stopped and chatted at each other or um, you know, no giggling or laughing or, you know, did you see that? Uh, it, it was awesome. And this is them just writing comments on a little 3x3 three three note paper, uh, a sticky note, and adding them. And then I did tell them that if you want to comment to a comment, you do the same thing. You address the person who signed the previous comment and then um, attach it directly to that post-it note. And so here, here's one um, that's after they've turned them all in. I took pictures of every single one, so I just have a few I think that I'll share. Um, another shot of the classroom while they're um, doing comments. It's just it's so much fun to watch them do this. Uh, they're so creative, and I did I do read all the comments um, after they turn them in. And if you want these photos, anybody can have them. Um, I'll uh, I'll upload them to Flickr later today. Um, but oops, let me go back. That's about it on the um, paper blogs activity. If anybody has any questions, um, I can take them now or I can move on to another favorite uh, subject in my class. OK, that'd be great. All right, then I'm going to move on um, to one of my other favorite uh, activities, uh, text poetry. This is um, a lot of fun for, for me because, uh, well, because of the looks that I get from the kids. And what I tell them is um, I start with, OK, well, now we're going to talk about poetry today. And I'm going to give you um, five of my all-time favorite poems. And I expect you to read them and then make comments on them and um, analyze them a little bit. And, you can just see their uh, eyes glaze over and heads drop back in that, oh, oh no, not that kind of look. And then I, I wait just a, just a moment and I say, so what you're going to do here is you're going to rewrite one of these poems in text lingo. And you can actually see the, the looks on some of their faces like, wait, no, did she really just say that? Was she serious? Um, I love that part. I should film it next year, this year. But they they get so into it, it's hilarious. But the best part is, in order to do this activity, they really have to understand each and every line because um, they're translating it basically into another language. And when I was wandering around doing this, and the kids were paired up to do the work, uh, one of the kids stopped me and he says, no one's going to be able to understand what these say, you know, hinting at the fact that grown-ups, we don't uh, know text lingo um, once you get past the age of 30, I guess. 
so I said, you know, that's okay. The point here is that you really know what the poet was saying. And they do. They really get it. You have a conversation with them after they've um, done this interpretation and they can see deeper into the poem than they did before. It's, it's wonderful, wonderful activity. But then the second part is, actually they usually will ask me while they're doing this part, can we write our own in text lingo? Well, that's the second part of the activity. And each year I'm blown away by what they create on their own. Um, I think that in order to share some of those with you, I'd have to go out to the web page for it, um, which I can do. But oh, I lost my chair. Okay, let me let me do that. Although Kim may may have to remind me how to do this. Tools, right? You click on the that's one way, or you can just click on the globe in your toolbar. Right, I knew that. And we'll go to this link here. I'm going to copy and paste it over. OK, so this is um, my notes from the Teach blog. And these, there's, there were two posts about text poetry. This is the second one, and it has a lot of the um, the poems that the kids actually wrote in text lingo. Uh, the first post um, has a poem that was written by one of my special needs kids last year. And I mean, I actually cried when I read it. It, it was just amazing. You know, someone who has trouble writing four or five word sentences came up with this unbelievably beautiful poem. Um, and you, if you've not been in this, if you illuminate and through a web tour, you'll need to scroll down on your own here to um, see more of the poems. Um, and they're they're on the blog, so you can read these anytime. But they they love they love doing this, and it gives them their own voice. Um, so it, it's it's really easy to do. Yeah, I know they add the smileys. Um, and honestly, my, my, my teacher, my grammar teacher inside me, when I saw that said, oh, you know, do we have to have the smiley? But then I, last year I had to let go of a lot of things. And I just took a deep breath and went, went on with it and decided, you know what, that really is kind of cool. So any questions on the, this text poetry? Um, session their lesson. It's really easy to do. Um, otherwise, I'll move on. Uh, yes, definitely authentic writing. Um, beautiful. Thank you, Peggy. Okay, so next is something that we've just started doing this year, and um, over the summer I read this book, uh, the Book Whisperer along with another one of our teachers who actually recommended it to uh, me. And it, it's just totally um, changed the way I think about teaching uh, literature, especially with middle school kids. Um, if you haven't read this book, go out today and get it. Or hop on Amazon and get it. It's a very quick read only because um, you don't want to stop reading it. But um, what Donalyn Miller um, describes in here is, you know, when we assign a book to an entire class, um, and I'm sure we've all been through this, you, you, you run the risk of having kids hate reading because they hate reading that book um, that you're reading. Because not all books match each reader. Um, and yet we expect them to read books that uh, are, are boring or are just not their type of book. 
I mean, ask yourself as a teacher, in your own personal reading life, would you read something that um, you found dull or, you know, you're not the type to read a romantic novel, but you've been assigned one? Not that I would ever assign something like that, but um, this lets the kids choose what they read. And by doing that, you help them learn to love reading. Um, there's, there's more empowerment here because they're taking responsibility for um, learning to love reading and making choices about what they read. Yes, I will help them with choices. I will encourage them to read uh, at least at grade level, but in most cases above grade level. Um, I will encourage them to step outside of you know, the same genre all year long. Um, but the idea is that they read 40 books in one year. That's 4-0. And it's all they're choosing. Um, and we do silent reading every day. The picture there uh, on the left is um, my seventh grader, Stephen, who decided when we went into the prayer garden to read that he would sit in the middle of the path. And I asked him about that later, and he says, yeah, um, that might not have been the best idea. It wasn't really comfortable. So maybe next time, Stephen will be the first to grab one of the benches. Um, but one of the, one of the things, honestly, that I love the most about this um, being a, a book whisperer at school is uh, the teacher is supposed to read at the same time that the kids do. So you're modeling your love of reading. So I get to read now on a consistent basis, 15 minutes a day at least. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled with it. There's so much more to this program um, that it would take at least another whole episode of uh, this webinar. So um, how, the question I, I get is how do you know that they're reading these 40 books? And we do a lit response journal. And they, um, yeah, I'm, that's where I'm headed, Peggy. Thank you. Uh, they uh, have to log in their books onto my um, website. Can we? Can I bring up the seventh grade website? Or did we decide I wouldn't? Okay. I don't have that. I'll have to see if I can get that. Um, okay, great. Thanks, Peggy. The um, I created a a Google form. Um, that I have on my seventh grade website where um, when they've finished reading a book, they, they have a, a piece of paper in their binder that they can write on. Um, and then when they're done, they also log it into this, um, here we go, into this Google form. And it gives me the name of the book, how many pages it is. And because if it's over 350 pages, it, uh, it counts as two books. And whoops, that's not the, that's not the website I was looking for. Here, let, can I add something in here? I don't think, you know what, honestly, I don't think I gave you the site because it's a, a Google site from school. OK, so, you can just type it in the address bar of the web tour. I'm not sure it'll open, but. We'll try it. There it is. OK, cool. So this is the seventh grade website that I created for the kids. Whoops. It just like really minimized on me. Uh, OK. I'll add it and if you look talking. It's going. It's there. I have it. OK. Um, if you look on the left-hand side, there's a, a link called Reading Log Entries. I'm going to click on that. And what they do is they come here to this Google form. Can everybody see that? You can't see it? Oh, you do. 
Okay. Keep talking Rats. and I'll okay. load it in um, app sharing. Okay, thank you. Um, so anyway, it's just a quick Google form. Very easy to create and um, actually, Len, I can't, it's behind our server. Um, it's password protected. I think that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, you'd have to, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, okay, so it's um, it's really easy for me to keep track of what they're reading, how much they're reading, and then they also have to give me a quick review on the book itself. Um, so that's pretty much it for the reading logs for me. Um, I think that's pretty much it for Book Whisperer. Um, any questions on that before I move on? I'll share, um, what I'll do is um, after the show is over, I'll, um, I'll share that form in uh, another from another um, uh, login, and so everybody will be able to see it if that'll work. Sure, no problem, Len. Um, so I thought I'd also talk briefly about uh, Google Apps um, and what we do with them at our school. We um, we became a Google Apps for Education school last year, and it was just uh, a huge bonus for me. I think I'm one of the few who uses it the most, but it it it's opened up the world for us, really. Even though it's closed off to us, uh, to the world, which um, I'm still working on, uh, it's at least getting my kids to know what it's like to be out there, and I'm. Sorry, I'm trying to read and do this at the same time, and not, that's not going to work for me. So, why don't I, I want to show you one thing, which I think Peggy had up just a moment ago, and that is ha one of the ways I kind of get around, um, start trying to type and talk at the same time, and I can't do that. One of the ways I get around this whole uh, um, avoiding having my kids be uh, available to the world is um, I do something like this. This is uh, uh, the fall blogging challenge that Melanie Holtzman started. Um, and I'll get the link to you for hers, unless somebody else has it. Um, and I start a regular blog. Um, this one is through Blogger. And have the kids add their comments to whatever I post. And we go through whole, the whole, you know, when you sign your comment, you only use your first name. And be sure to read your comment before you post it. Um, although I do have to uh, uh, post them for them. And no, that's not, that's not the one, Kim. Um, but basically, I, each week, they will um, be given a writing prompt. Whoops, I lost the uh, the web tour there. Try again, yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. Okay.com. Um, it wasn't. Hmm. Can you see the web tour now? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so I created just a whole new blog where I'll post each week my response to um, the topics that I post. They're a little bit different than the ones that Melanie came up with because I wanted them to be geared more towards um, my kids, of course. Um, and then, seeing a blank page. Huh. Okay, so Kim, everybody seems to be seeing a blank page. Go ahead and keep going because it might take a while to load. Um, and sometimes different browsers have different issues. 
So we post the link in the chat and they can access it um, later. And it looks like um, Karen's having some difficulties with her audio again and just got disconnected. And Angela, did you have a question or a comment that you would like to? Um... OK, Karen's back. Great. If you could go ahead and just, OK. Sorry. OK, I... over to you, Karen. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's just that uh, the server here, I don't know what's being so glitchy today. Um, you want to see the Google Apps screencast? I think you guys had that, right? Do you want to show that, Kim? Sure, I'll load it right now. So last year, when we first got the uh, Google Apps, we were trying to encourage all the teachers to get in there and use them with the kids, but but you know, most of them were saying, well, we don't know how to do it. So I, I had my seventh graders create screencasts. And they worked in groups to, to do this. Um, and they, they just did a phenomenal job. I, I was thrilled. And this um, Google Sites one that Dominic and his crew created is, well, I shouldn't say it's my favorite, but really, it's one of my favorites. Um, do you play that, or do they have to play it on their own? How does that work, Kim? Well, pretty cool. It's, hello, and welcome to Google Apps for Education. We are there going we to go. teach you about sites. First, we're going to teach you how to create a new site. So first, you press New Site, and then you have to name your site, site first. So then it'll save automatically. You can choose from a blank template, which will give you a totally blank site where you can customize your site. Or you can choose a theme. Some of these themes are iceberg, open sky. Like they, they look like these. They're pretty cool. And then when you've chosen a theme or your blank template, you press Create Site. When you have your site here, there are a few links up here. Create page, edit page, and more actions. By now, I'm going to teach you how to edit your page. Press edit page, and then you pretty much just start typing. When you're done with your changes, you have to press save. Otherwise, your changes won't be saved, and you'll have to redo what you just wrote. Now. And to create a new page off your site, you press Create Page. There are a few options that you can choose from. Start page, list, file cabinet, announcement, or web page. Right now, for our purposes, we're going to use announcement. Name your, name your site or your title of your page. And you put it under Home or Top Level. You can also choose a different location which, if you have more pages off your site, you can choose one. And now we're going to put it under Home. And when you're finished, you press Create Page. On Announcements, you can press New Post. And from here, you can write what you want. So you title your post, and then you write. And then when you're done, you can either save it as a draft if you're not finished, or just save. So if you want your site to look cool and colorful, press More Actions, and then Manage Sites. From here, you go to Colors and Fonts. Here, you can press Custom, where you choose your own color. You can change your font, link color, or page visiting color, or pretty much just everything that you can add a color to. And then when you're done with your changes, press Save Changes. And you go return to your site when you're done. 
now we're going to show you some of the gadgets you can use on your blog. Okay, so we have the announcements, which we already showed you, where you can blog. A file cabinet, which is a great way for mainly teachers to organize data. Same for the list. It's just like, you know, listing what you've done, other stuff. And then the start page. Thanks, Ken. Um, the, the best part of that uh, web uh, screencast, excuse me, um, is a little bit later where he talks about um, how to write comments. Uh, it it's really interesting. It was really interesting for me to watch as his teacher because I, I was just so proud because he got it. You know, he he remembered what it, what he was supposed to do, and he was he was doing the teaching, and, and that was a phenomenal experience for me, but also for them. Um, they were thrilled. I mean, over the moon thrilled that they were going to be the ones teaching the teachers. They just thought that was so cool. Um, and I think that's why they did such a phenomenal job, um, because it was authentic, because somebody was going to use it and need it. Um, we used ScreenFlow. You know, I don't. That wasn't my choice, um, but it, we had it in in the lab, so that's what uh, that's what they decided to use. Um, yeah, and I'm thrilled. Screen Toaster is back. That's such an easy program to use. Um, so uh, you know, Kim, it's uh, kind of that time, right? I, mm -hmm. I can keep talking, or you can sum us wrap us up. I'm going to go ahead and formally wrap up the session, and then we'll take questions. And I've taken some questions out of the chat. And okay, there we go. And we want to let you know that on Tuesday, October 12th. Steve Hargadon will be interviewing Sylvia Martinez at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. And we hope that you'll join Steve. And then on Wednesday, the 13th, Steve will be interviewing Roger Shank at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. And then on Thursday, Kathleen Cushman will be leading the student panel on homework with Steve Hargadon and on his interview series. At Thursday um, at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, and we hope that you'll join Steve for those sessions. And next Saturday at the same time, Matt Montaigne will be joining us from EdTech Talk, and he will be talking about project-based learning and design thinking for students in grades kinder through all the way through college. And he's a phenomenal teacher out in California. We've had him on our show when he was talking about his student radio program. So we hope that you'll join us then as well. And then on the 23rd, we won't be having a session so that we can um, support the DEN Discovery Educators Network, the fall virtual conference. So with it, um, you, can, you won't see us that day, but you can have a whole day of great professional development provided by the DEN. Again, next Saturday, October 16th, will be Matt Montaigne. And as soon as you exit the session today, a survey will open in your browser. And we hope that you'll give us great feedback and information about today's show, as well as future topics you'd like to see, and the elementary teachers that you would like to see on our future featured teacher sessions. You can also request a professional development certificate. And if for some reason you forget to do that on the survey or the survey doesn't automatically load for you, you can email us at live at classroom20.com and give us a few days for us to get the results back from Illuminate. And Peggy will send that out to you. And she's the one who created the certificate and takes care of that. And we thank her for that. She does a phenomenal job keeping up with that. She also helped us secure an iTunes U channel through Arizona's ideal e-learning platform. And to access the channel directly in iTunes, you can go to tinyurl.com 
slash CR20Live iTunes U. And that opens directly up in your browser and it opens up iTunes. And then you can download and subscribe to the MP3, the MP4, and the chat log and take us with you wherever you go. And we want to give a very special thanks to Karen today for joining us, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom20.com and Future of Education and many other social networks and online adventures. And we want to thank each of you today for joining us. And we understand if you have to leave, but we hope that you can stay and especially to illuminate and learn central so that we can meet and discuss all of these things each and every week. And you can find out more information about the fall virtual conference by going to discoveryeducation.com, Christine, and it takes you directly um, and there's information on there about the, the webinars. Yes, thank you, Paulin. It's uh, October 23rd. It starts at 9 and goes all the way to 3 back-to-back -back sessions from various presenters as well as teachers implementing. And you don't have to be a subscriber of Discovery Services to use those things. You can um, just you can use the things that are free and accessible on the site if you're not a subscriber or your campus doesn't of Discovery Streaming Services. And Lee, did you have a question that you would like to um, ask or make a comment? I guess Lee had to leave because I don't see her. So Karen, I'm going to pass it back to you. And I'm going to, um, Randall asked earlier, do you take comments down that don't follow the rules? Do I take them down? Um, or remove what I them from the blog? Um, what, what we do, there are um, three possible consequences for um, improper or inappropriate comments, um, and they're on the back of that blogging agreement. Um, the, I, make, I make the kid, uh, the student, take it down if it's inappropriate. Um, I mean, I, have, I can, if I, if I need to, I will take something down after I take a screenshot of it. Um, but I want them to be the ones who take ownership of the fact that, you know, this was not okay and um, I'm taking it down because I made a mistake. Um, but yes, they do have to take those down if it's inappropriate. Uh, fortunately, uh, in the, the two years that we've been doing this, um, I've only had to do that once. And they do also lose their um, Google privileges. Um, for you know, at least a week. It depends on what it was. If it was just something, you know, excuse the word, stupid, um, like this was last year, we just he lost his privileges for a week. But if it's if it if it's really inappropriate or um, mean or spiteful, uh, they could lose their privileges for the whole trimester or the the rest of the year. It really depends on the severity of it. Did that answer your question? Great, thank you. And those consequences are important. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lee asked earlier, do the students enter their information from school on your uh, reading log? Like from the school or at home? Um, either. Um, I only have one student this year who does not have access from home. Um, and that's more about um, a parental choice, but they can they can enter it whenever they want. Uh, most of them do it from home, but occasionally, if um, when, like when we're in the computer lab, I'll tell them, okay, if you get done ahead of everybody and you have time um, and you have some books that need to be entered, please do that. Um, and we, they usually do that on Mondays when we go to the computer lab. Um, and I have six beautiful iMacs in the back of my classroom, one of which I'm using right now. And awesome. I know. I, we just got these at the end of the year because they replaced the, uh, the computers in the computer labs. So yes, very lucky, very lucky. Um, Romeo and Juliet in text. 
Interesting. Okay. That would be I interesting. Have to that. Yeah. <laughs> do you let the students use text language on their blogs? No, I comments? don't. I don't. Um, they they do that enough, and I I yeah. explain that you know it's this is this is for education. This isn't you talking to your best friend, and I I want them. It's part of the distinguishing between you know writing a comment as a, a message to a friend versus writing a comment to an assignment um, for school. And so the assignment for school, it needs to be written in formal language. And that includes I would capitalizing agree with that. I the would pronoun I. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I would, I would probably enforce the same grammatical rules. Uh, um, oh, and somebody else, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say Peggy wanted to um, wanted me to talk about the homework Dropbox that I created um, okay. when I was when I was at ISTE this year. Um, <laughs> yes, Peggy, I do what Peggy tells me. Um, one of my aha moments, if you will, was when I was sitting in a session with Vicki Davis, the cool cat teacher. Love her. And she was talking about how um, when her students finish an assignment, they have to link it to her wiki. And I started thinking, you know, because I needed something that would make it easier for me to find their assignments. With 36 kids, actually up to 72 with two classes, looking for everybody's um, uh, blog posts can be challenging and time consuming. So what I did was I created another Google form. And whenever they uh, add something to their blog, they have to copy and paste um, the URL for that exact page where they posted it into the homework Dropbox. And then I get this beautiful spreadsheet um, that gives me a direct link to the assignment. It gives me the name of the assignment so that I can sort them based on the name of the assignment. But it also allows me um, the ability to sort it based on um, student numbers. So I can tell instantly who's done their work and who hasn't. It, it saved me hours of work already. Um, and that's, that's like one of my, my, my favorite things that I've come up with this year because it's really helping me a lot. Oh, yeah, there's the uh, the post on it on the Dropbox. Um, super awesome. easy. Super easy. And, and I can, um, I think that one is also behind the, the server. So I'll create one like that on um, my regular Gmail account and share that with everybody. OK, that would be great. OK. And another question was, um, can you have students use Google Sites, or do you have to have an email for them? Um, we don't. We don't need an email. We have Google Apps for Education, so um, they have an email when when they they uh, enroll here as a student, basically, and it, it's all done through. Um, Sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Car drove by in the parking lot. Um, they don't need a separate email for us to create a Google site. Google Apps in Canada. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't see why not. I don't know. Florida was here. They have, they have, Canada has a law about um, like blogging and stuff. The server has to be located in Canada oh, okay. for a lot of their things, so that may not work. Oh, bummer. I don't know if that's for all of Canada or just certain parts, but I think it's the, a national law. Wow, um, that's interesting. Another, yeah, kind of, yeah. Lorna told us about that. Another person asked, Christine asked, how do you assess your students using Google Docs? How do I assess them? Um, yes. Oh, actually, that's 
That's that's an interesting question. I came up with a spreadsheet um, that I uh, it's just a regular Google spreadsheet, and I share it with them. Um, let's see, how do I say this? They have their own folder in Google Docs, and so I've shared this spreadsheet into their folders, and on that spreadsheet for each assignment. Um, I give them their grade right there, so I will have like the name of the assignment, the number of points it's worth, and the number of points they got, and then I also have a section for comments, um, you know, great job, or hey, you know, let's work on um, proofreading or writing a little bit more, whatever the comment might be, and so they see it pretty instantly. Um, I used Edmodo last year, but I haven't gotten it approved yet. So I'm, I'm doing uh, the next best thing. Um, also, I, I have them do like grammar assignments in Google Docs, and they can um, share their assignment with me when they're done, and I can make comments right there. Um, it's so easy for me. Uh, again, as somebody with special needs, it takes me hours to go through one stack of papers and write comments. But being able to do it online, it saves me so much time. It's been a huge bonus for me. I can imagine that would be a great time saver. Right, um, see, Christine, Christine asked about yeah about correcting grammar or spelling. Um, I I can highlight. Um, where I see issues, and I, I make them go back and find um, the the issues, you know, so that they're. I give them a clue as to where the issue is, but they need to figure out, um, you know, oh, that's not uh, proper subject verb agreement, or that word is spelled wrong. Um, I, I put the the responsibility back on them, basically. And she also asked earlier, how flexible are you with digital assignments? Parents always give me excuses about the internet being down, your website wasn't working, and how do you stick to deadlines? Um, I'm, I'm probably more flexible than I should be. I, I'm more concerned with the fact that they get it done um, than they get it done when it's convenient for me. And, but I do say at back to school night, I tell the parents, um, I won't accept ex excuses of uh, I couldn't get online last night or I couldn't, the, the printer wasn't working or something. I won't accept those excuses from the kids because that's just too easy to say. And how can I prove them wrong? So I, I tell the parents, if that's the case, I, I'd like either a note or an email from you telling me that that's the case. And then they can stay in at recess or whatever and do it here in the classroom. Yeah, Christine, keep asking questions. These are great. And so you haven't had any pushback or anything about the, you know, comments from parents or anything negative? No, not, not anything. They're thrilled. Parents are thrilled that, um, that, we're use, that I'm using technology here. And I was just thinking that, Christine, um, about online testing, or do your students have to adhere to the state testing? Well, as a Catholic school, um, we, we do the, the um, ITBS Iowa testing, um, which we just finished a couple weeks ago. And as far as online testing, you mean just like regular throughout the school year kind of testing? Um, I haven't done that. I, I did one quiz last year with the eighth graders. Oh, yeah, I started to do that, Peggy, I, and got sidetracked. Um, but anyway, online testing, uh, I would love to. I know that um, Tammy Worcester has, has a post somewhere about doing a, a Google form that will cre uh, excuse me, correct itself for you. but those would be, you know, multiple choice and true-false and all that 
and I, I just don't really care for those. Um, I, I would still have to read through what they've written, I would think. Uh, let's see. Um, what was the other question? Okay, you were going to talk about your parent portal? Uh, yeah, can I put this in the uh, web tour? Sure. Still? Okay. So this is, um, let's see, is it coming up for everybody? It came up. Yes. I've got it. Okay. Some may take a little longer. Okay. So I created this last year, I think, for our teachers um, as a way of sharing all the great sites that I find throughout the year. Um, to be honest, I, I think I may be the only one who uses it. So please, if you see this as, as being of any value, please use it, pass it on. Um, I A lot of these I don't use because I don't teach these younger grades, but I found them and thought I'd share them with everybody. But I try to um, include links for every grade level up through grade 8 because that's what we have here and for every subject. And then I also have links for, um, you know, little things like technology, which I love, and um, lesson plan um, resources and Bloom's taxonomy. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah, there's, and there's it's fantastic. Um, it's really a wealth of resources. Ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, and if anybody finds a link in there that doesn't work, please let me know and I'll fix it. Um, and, and there's I'll no password for it, right? Nope, just need that link. That's it. And Peggy asked earlier about what did the kids say about the book whisper? Um, in terms of like having to read 40 books, that was that, that was interesting. The first day of school, I told them our our goal for the year was each kid was going each student was going to read 40 books of their own choosing, and I expected eye rolls and moans and groans and rolling in the aisle. Um, and what I caught just totally blew me away. I, I had kids actually going, yes. <laughs> so they're excited. I have a class already of big readers. So they beg me every day, can we have a little bit more silent reading time? Um, can we go outside wow. and read? Yeah, it's yeah that's great. phenomenal when they ask for reading, yeah, reading time. I love it. I love it. Usually you have to bribe them, pull teeth just to get them to cooperate. So that's nope, exciting. Not, not a one. It's wonderful. And I get to read while they're reading. Yes. Which yes. I love. Yeah, it's important to model that. Absolutely. And that's a, a huge yes. part of, of the program. So Absolutely. It's wonderful. Absolutely. And if um, anybody would like to ask a question of somebody, you can click on the hand with the green arrow. Not a, of somebody. You can uh, ask Karen a question or make a comment. Now, uh, Reva, this is the website. It's guest.portaportal. Yeah, that should take you right to it, Reva. Yeah. Oh, my Flickr page. And we'll add the the Flickr link in our Glam links. Victoria at the end. And Victoria, did you want to use the mic? Or was that your question? Okay. We'll add that to the GLAM link. So be sure and watch for that. Yeah, I'll upload um, some of those pictures. Uh, for, uh, for the blogs, those paper blogs. And, and you're McPeach on, at Flickr, right? No, I'm not. Um, oh. I, I actually was just getting that link. I'm at CTK McMillan. Although I think I did 
make it so that if you search for McTeach, you can find me there. Okay. All right, and Peggy's asking about mapping with a heart. Oh, mapping the world by heart. Um, that's yes. a, a program I'm just starting. Oh, bye, Paula. Thanks for coming. Um, it's, uh, I forget the man's name off the top of my head. Yes, Victoria. Karen is definitely inspiring. You can see why we asked her to join us today. And she was just talking about the Mapping the World by Heart, which is a Fable Vision product. And Peggy has put in the link that you can get more information regarding this, uh, the project using their software and their website. And the idea was uh, Posted here by Peter Reynolds of Fable Vision. Bye, Maureen. Thanks for joining us. Take care, Sarah. And Peggy's put the link in here. And Karen can finish talking about this project. Uh, sorry. Um, I don't know why that keeps happening. No problem. It happens. Um, so, like I said, I'm still just getting to know the program, but it comes with this binder that's filled with lessons um, that go from, you know, the basic lessons of um, latitude and longitude to the more specific lessons about each of the continents and countries and such. Um, but it's just it's a, a phenomenal way to, to get the kids interested in geography, not to mention learning more about it. Um, and I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to keep like posting uh, to the blog as we go um, so that I can share what we're doing. Um, it, it's, it'll be a learning experience for me all year long. So that's, that's about all I can tell you about the program, so far anyway. And it's very reasonably priced. It's like 70 bucks for 17 maps and the binder of the activities and suggestions. Yeah, it's not expensive at all. And, you, and it comes with all of the lesson plans that you'll need for the entire year. And they're very easy to do. Um, we did and of course, he has great graphics and mm -hmm. fantastic ideas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, you can change them up. Like I, I changed one of them from, um, oh, it was the, they wanted you to have each student have a, uh, a grapefruit and then to use a knife to cut the grapefruit. And that's one of the ways mm. to explain the, um, uh, the Mercator, the projection maps. And I just thought, you mm -hmm. know, putting um, knives into the hands of 34 <laughs> middle school students I didn't think that would be a good idea. So, um, no, not with their no. hormones mm -hmm. and attitudes. Yeah. So we used balloons, and and that was a lot oh. of fun. And until one of them popped, and then everybody screamed. But yeah, I, I bet it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gene, uh, for joining us. Um, Are there any other questions that I might have overlooked that haven't been addressed yet? If so, please um, type them in the chat or you can click on the hand with the green up arrow before we let Karen go and enjoy the rest of her Saturday. I, I want to give everybody a chance to ask questions. And geo teachers, uh, Karen? Yeah. Um, this year, oh, over the summer, uh, it was quite a professional development summer for me from my first trip to ESD to um, going down to the Googleplex twice. Uh, the first time was for the Geo Teachers Institute, um, and we learned a lot about how to use Google Earth and Google Maps and SketchUp with students. Um, and then, of course, just to be at Google was uh, a phenomenal experience I know. itself. Um, 
I, I told my, my students this story. They love it. One, uh, one of the people I was um, sitting with asked the question, OK, so what happens if you Google Google at Google? Does the world fall in on itself? Um, <laughs> so somebody tried it, and we're all still here. So I think we're OK. Um, <laughs> but I did. There's a, a link in the, the GLAM links um, for a website I'm working on um, that has information about Google Earth and Google Maps and SketchUp uh, and how to use all those programs in the classroom. Um, so hopefully that'll that'll help people that want to learn more. Um, Definitely. It, it was phenom a phenomenal experience. I mean, how many people can say that they learned how to use Google Earth from a volcanologist? You know, we had oh, we had yeah. them there, so pretty cool. Sorry, I'm starting to wow, ramble. Wow, that's right from the expert. <laughs> that's OK. And you're known as McTeach on Clerk and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everywhere. And yes, Homework Dog, we do send out the links once they've been posted to the blog post on Twitter. Thank you, Peggy. You can find her at CTK McCTK K McMillan, yeah. and I'll. That's her Flickr name, Lynn. I posted earlier my um, email address. If anybody has questions, here it is again. Please feel free to send me an email. And it looks like our questions are winding down, so we're going to go ahead and let Karen go for today. You can email her if something comes up or you think of something after we close out the session today. And we hope that you'll give us great feedback and some information on future shows that you'd like to see on the survey when the survey opens for you as you exit the session. And please join us next Saturday when we're going to have Matt Montaigne on. And he's another teacher, and you'll learn some great practical ways. And he's also using Blue Labs for education. So I know he'll be talking about that. This is their first year of implementing it with their students. So you'll want to join for that as well. So have a great Saturday, everybody, and a great weekend. And happy Thanksgiving for those up in Canada. And we will see you next Saturday. Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining us today.